Well, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order. So let's do a roll call. Hankins. Here. Triplet. Here. Bauer Sachs isn't here. Dietz. Here. Olfest. Here. Vogel. Here. Dyers. Here. Okay, thank you. Um, you've had a chance to look at the agenda, which is uh, pretty simple this evening. I have a motion to approve, please. I'll move. Thank you. Second. Second. Make a motion. All right. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Okay. We approve the agenda. Uh, next on the item is uh, approval of the uh, meetings of the last minute meeting for October 19th. Um, Make a motion that we approve as written. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right. Good. Thank you. Uh, have there been any uh, comments received that uh, are from our uh, local public that we should know about? No, sir. All right. Thank you. And okay. So we're to our main item this evening is talk about our camp comprehensive plan to do list. Um, I kind of went through these and kind of I read through them and I kind of highlighted the items that had the our organ or had the PNZ noted as uh, either the lead or or uh, you know partner. So I don't know how you folks would like to kind of look through these. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way. I mean, one way is just to go through each one line by line and check them yes or no, or if, if there's anything we want to do with them. And uh, then I guess maybe have some other, maybe we can go through those and then um, just a general uh, discussion uh, of any other items or maybe how what we want to look at and other things as we go forward. Uh, does that sound like a reasonable way to approach this? Yeah, I think Anybody that sounds good. I, I think that sounds good. Uh, also, I have a quick question for staff. Uh, did, did the subdivision regulations that we voted on in our last meeting, did those get approved by council? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good, all right. Well, let's just start out here then. Um, I'm starting here with, uh, I think I got the same page as you've got up there. Tree, yeah, okay. Uh, tree preservation ordinance. I think we've done that, haven't we? we yes, you have. Yeah. There is a new tree, tree ordinance. Right. So we can, is there anything we need to know about that? I think we're okay there. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, update landscaping ordinance to require street trees to be planted along all defined parkways, defining the spacing species and caliper. Um, I can't um, remember us doing anything with that. Or I, I, th I think it may have been partially included with the with the subdivision regulations. I may need to check. I don't know that it was specific in terms of species or uh, caliper of trees, though. Would some of that be in the tree ordinance? No, the, the, I don't think so. Okay. I may, I'm going to have to, and I apologize, I did not go through this list. I did not have the opportunity to go through this list myself ahead of time. Um, I think it's partially covered. I can, in, in the, the subdivision regulations, but um, I can check into that okay. further. So I guess from that one, we kind of need to review <clears throat> what the status of things are. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like I said, it's partially done, but I don't know that it was as specific as uh, species and caliper and trees. Right. Okay. Um. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I would add on that one too. The visioning um, was looking into a couple grants um, specific to right away and and um, um, just defined parkways. I guess I don't know if that's probably not exactly the same, but right. yeah, I think there's yeah. a couple. Um, grants that 
uh, maybe Chelsea was looking into um, coming from the derecho <clears throat> that aren't, you know, ordinance solutions necessarily, right. but are things that happening sort of in this vein nonetheless. And, and I think that there may be some programs that, that we're working on there. So um, I think there are things happening um, along these lines uh, that are worth no, just, you know, sure. the relative to, to the topic, but, um, and then that maybe feeds into maybe lessening the need for um, uh, an update to the ordinance, given all the other changes to, you know, the, the tree ordinance and all the subdivision. Mm -hmm. This may be something that wasn't handled <laughs> this explicit way, but is, is covered nonetheless. And I'm in not- other, In well, other areas. Yeah, the one thing I would, point out is the subdivision ordinances is, is an ordinance that puts the burden of installing trees on the developer. So that's right. that's your mechanism for if you want to have a developer install trees. I, one thing we may want to do, uh, just as a suggestion, is take a look at the, at the streets that were defined as parkways in the comp plan. There may be other streets that you want to show as a parkway that are not shown in the comp plan, or you may want to extend them. Um, I don't know that that's a huge task, but um, I, I think that that may be something we should take a look at. Um, as it, I mean, obviously, Whitetail Parkway was de uh, described as a as a, um, a parkway, uh, so that's one where de the developer, as as the de as Jared Ruckold's development moves forward, for example, would be required to install trees on both sides of that street. And, and that's just kind of one example, but we may want to just when we take a closer look at the actual plans themselves, that may be something that you want to make sure that that's still in line with what they're thinking. And, 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 and if the visioning committee is looking at other locations, maybe we want to make sure that they're co they're, it's coordinated with what they're doing too. And, and just to be clear, I, we haven't gotten to that point with the visioning committee as far as where they would go. And, and moreover, you know, I, I, I didn't want to, None of those things that are relative to this that I brought up are meant to say that that I think this is covered. I think this is a topic that you know you really can't do too much, honestly, um, when it comes to you know beautification and adding uh, streetscape stuff and, yeah. and and constantly looking out for that. I just I just think it's relative and germane to the topic. So um, wanted to add that. Okay. Any other thoughts about that particular item? If not, we'll move on to um, update site plan regulations to require landscaped islands and large parking lots to break up expanses of pavement and define parking areas. Um, that's not been done. Okay, I didn't think so. I didn't remember doing anything about that. I know we had an issue about that on the church parking lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I think some prior discussions had been uh, looking at some other city uh, cities in the metro ordinance where they uh, required um, islands every anywhere from 10 to 15 parking stalls so that you didn't have more than 10 or 15 stalls in a row without an island with a tree in it. I suppose that's something we should kind of put on our to-do list to actually um, schedule in sometime then to take a look at it. You know, I, I don't think this is a big deal uh, for us. I don't know what intermediate means, but I would term it more long-term because we, we don't have a Costco or going in. Maybe we have a high V that might be affected, but I, I know that in the wintertime, uh, people don't like clearing oh, yeah, the snow sure. with all these islands in them. And I know they rip them up uh, with their snow plows because they don't see them. Right. Uh, and uh, then it becomes an eyesore. And, you know, there probably are some good civic companies that take care of it, but go back and redo it. But they don't necessarily think that's fun to have to go back every winter and redo their islands. So probably maybe some... Well, I don't know. I suppose it depends on how large the parking lot actually is, too. would have something to do with that, too. Well, yeah. You know, 
it's still they got a clear snow from it and if you got a yeah. island that's got it's got to have a curb on it or it's going to take all the landscaping out right yeah I, I just don't think it's that important in polk city so maybe anywhere okay all so right. it could be could be put down long term and you know when things come up maybe we could look at that again but not necessarily remove it okay is there yeah, yeah one other yeah just, I, the one thing i was going to mention too is is some communities have done it by by the number of cars and number of rows so that rather than islands per se it's actually a a green strip that's in between the head in parking so that you don't have the curb damage i mean mm -hmm. that's just kind of another approach to it and they don't even always have curbs. It actually a lot of times will drain to a grassed area and it becomes kind of a rain garden, improves your water quality at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. What, um, did, what did we decide on that? Are we just changing the timing or? Is there a consensus to just kind of put it to long term for now? What if, I mean, what have we looked at just? different options that are out there. You know, like maybe maybe the trees aren't the answer for you, Doug, but what if it is like a, a bioswales or rain gardens or something to break it up? And I don't think it's something that affects us tomorrow, but you know, if somebody moves in and wants to do it, then it may be something that catches us and we're not ready for it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing is if you want that in, it should probably be there because otherwise it, you, you, you don't want to have an after the fact sort of a situation. Uh, Kathleen, what does intermediate mean? Is um, it after medium? Um, I don't know why I would think medium would be, I would have to look. Uh, the immediate was obviously it's very short immediate. term. It was a timing thing on when it should be looked at. Um, I'd have to pull up the oh, it's in, immediate. Okay. It's immediate, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just like know what it is. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily have to take it off, but because it, it could be an important item the way you described it. But I, I think that the timing of it ought to be maybe reviewed and maybe make a suggestion on that to us. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sorry, I'm probably already past my liaison role. That's no, all right. <laughs> Should but discussion, just general uh, discussion. Uh, well, feel free to it, standing rule to cut me off. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I probably will break. But it, I, I'm not going to argue with Doug's point on the maybe the effectiveness of of how this actually plays out, and, and the you know snowplow good point is a good one too. But I, I'm probably closer to to Justin in the sense that um, it, you know it, it it may be something that, that if there's a model ordinance out there or an example in a couple of communities that's marginally more effective. Uh, this is something that I hear a lot about, and, and I know it's, you know, for a resident, um, it's easy to bring these things up when they're not a developer or they're not a residential owner. But um, to the extent that we can have something like this that demonstrates our willingness to play an active role in this space around um, green space and, and requirements and aesthetic appeal and that, I, I think it it bears some discussion. So again, I don't think Doug's wrong at all with, you know, does this move the needle demonstrably? No, probably not, but it, it would be something that I think we could look into as just further cite that, you know, the, the city does have a concern about um, these types of issues and, and wants to be as proactive sure. as, as uh, you know, in a, in a business friendly way uh, or business, appropriate commercial development way, I should say. Um, just kind of my two cents. We can pull some, we will pull some other ordinances from some other cities. We can take a look at it. Okay, that's a good idea. Take a look. Yeah, I'd still like to know what <clears throat> immediate means. It means right it away, on, Doug. It, it what? It means right away. So the, the timing, oh. the immediate goes first then short term is next, then medium, then long term. And then if it was if it was listed as ongoing, then it would have been something <clears throat> that can't be taken care of at one swipe. Okay, thanks. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I 
I'd vote to change that. Uh, yeah, to I'd, I'd, probably, I'd probably agree with Doug on that, that it, I mean, I, I think it's very important, but I don't think that it's uh, necessarily faster than some of these other things that are showing in the short and, and uh, range and uh, issues. And also uh, did agree with, uh, with Dennis's comment on it might be good to have this have a minimum number of parking lots in the lot to start with before it would apply so that we don't get into having uh, the trees in a relatively small parking lot where the snow removal would be more of an issue. Well, for, for example, that uh, lot there on, uh, on uh, third, there where those uh, condominiums are going in and you've got that big rectangular lot there that's available for commercial use. I can't see any kind of requirement for something like that there because by the time you get any buildings on there, there's not going to be much extra room. So, you know, it would take, for me, it would, I would want it to look nice and I want it, would want it to have, um, you know, those kinds of features, I guess, but it, to, to have, we start requiring islands or, or like the other kinds of um, ways to break it up that, uh, Kathleen was talking about, it would take a fairly good sized lot, parking lot, you know, more like what we see at the church there off, off Bridge Road, something that size to, you know, think more about having those kind of features in it, I guess. So is there a consensus to kind of move that to medium or short? from immediate to short or medium, immediate. It might be an easier item to take care of than some other items. So I'd say move it from immediate, immediate to short. Okay. Uh, but on some of the ones that we might think are easier, you know, I hate to put them back too much further than sure. that. Sure. Is there a consensus for that then? I, it cut out a little bit. Was that moving from immediate to what? Short. Uh, too short. Yeah, I would go with short. Okay, good enough. All right. All right, our next item that we're tasked with is implement more specific design requirements for commercial development in special development and redevelopment areas, such as architectural compatibility in terms of material and character, Reevaluate materials considered as an acceptable alternative to brick where required. And that is listed as uh, timing for short. Don't we already have the last sentence in that? In the, we, we, we have we, looked at that. Yeah, I, the reason uh, as I recall that that was in the comprehensive plan was just because there had been some requests for alternative materials to be considered acceptable to brick. And one in particular that came up was the, um, I'm gonna call it kind of a, a Trex type siding that was used on, um, boy, the, the, the new building on the square. And I apologize, Point I don't or... remember. And, and that, so there, there really wasn't a lot of wiggle room the way the ordinance was written. So it was, it was pretty rigid. Um, and the other thing that we had discussed was when do the new architectural design standards kick on in on an existing building? If somebody's completely remodeling the existing building, are they held to those standards or are they not? Uh, because the way the standards are written, it's, it almost implies that every building needs to do it, but obviously if you're redoing a, an existing structure, it kind of depends on how, how, Matt, how extensive the remodeling is before you're gonna require them to change the outside of the building. And so that was some of the clarifications that were talked about. And then trying to just look at the design standards and places where it, it kind of talks about encourage and there's a lot of words that are I'll say soft language because it'll say encourage or discourage, but it's not, it, you know, it's, it's not rigid. It's pretty fluid. So, but mm. I think really part of it between the, when, when does it kick in? When do those requ requirements kick in for remodeling mm. an existing structure and, and uh, 
if you want to allow something that at, le- at the very least would allow PNZ to consider alternative materials in all, mm-hmm. um, for brick. Uh, um, I think that's a good comment. And maybe we should follow what the International Building Code says about that. Uh, and that's, I think, what um, Polk City uses. And I haven't read it lately, but it has a certain percentage, like if, if 50% of the building is being uh, renovated, uh, then um, it kicks in where they have to update the whole thing for the current code. But if, yeah. it's, less, if it's less than that, it may be only parts of it have to be <clears throat> uh, that. And if we follow similar percentages, then we're not going to have problems with the building uh, department and the building inspection. Yeah, and the other thing too, I mean, and obviously this is a little bit more aesthetics as opposed to code requirements, but uh, because it's more, do you want brick or do you, are you going to let them have, you know, vinyl siding? Um, but we, the zoning code does use a substantial improvement as 50% um, improved based on value. So again, you need to base it on either, make sure you understand if it's either going to be based on 50% value or 50% based on square footage of the building too, just. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, the other challenge with this is too that they're always coming up with new types of materials that really are mm-hmm. fairly attractive mm-hmm. to, you know, use for these different um, you know, exteriors and stuff. And that's, it's always hard to keep up with that. And I don't know how you, how you design a, a regulation that somehow can accommodate those kind of things. It's, it's a challenge. And I think one way is just making it clear what is acceptable and then giving, uh, giving the latitude and the ordinance that they can show us other materials that we could <laughs> approve uh, approve uh, once we have seen them right yeah and we don't need we shouldn't have the ordinance be so rigid that we can't take that last step right there are thousands of materials out there that could be acceptable to sure. us and right. that's a really good comment that Ron made okay is there anything more we need to discuss with that or what should we do moving forward with that one is there anything at this point we need to do you want to keep it on the short is that yeah just leave it as short and i but i'm not sure what we have or what we need to do do we need to look at what our current code is on that and suggest any modifications or changes to accommodate this? What I mean, one thing you, I mean, I could pull out like that section and at a, for a future meeting and just kind of redline a suggestion and then you guys can review it and change it however you want to. Um, but that, I, I don't think, you know, depending on that, I don't think that would be real time cons- or very time consuming uh, just to bring back that code section. Um, we probably ought to do something to look at it since it's on our to-do list here. I think it'd be again, good to look it's on at. short, so. Yeah. What, do, what does it currently call out for for the square? Is it percentage oh. of brick or? It, yeah, it's got a percentage of brick. I, I, off the top of my head, I don't remember what. It's possibly 60%. Um, so, I, you know, but okay. let me, I, can, I can check real quick So here. when that art studio or whatever had, I know there was damage during the ratio and they redid the, Front of their building and it probably went from brick to something else I mean, it looks good but you know does that meet i guess is a question that comes to mind yeah and a lot of times there are exceptions for acts of god like that you know if you have a tornado whatever you know like that where it allows somebody to rebuild who is basically it's almost more of a maintenance so you because you don't want to discourage you know if you discourage it too much then you can wind up having buildings get into disrepair so yeah, not just more looking at if other people come in to do it and, you know, they've been allowed to switch right. theirs and where we stand, but. Right. Um, I have a question for you, um, Kathleen. This is Deanna. Um, 
is the one of my concerns um, is especially with new building pieces is um, uh, how do I say this nicely um, to look less industrial and more um, community attractiveness. And um, I think one of the hangups in our code is that it doesn't really allow us to require that of new buildings. And I guess, I guess from my perspective, that's one of my concerns about our code and how do we make it more, um, I think what I keep going back to and I keep thinking of um, Dennis's comments before about, you know, wanting that whole community look, whether it was, you know, the Prairie Trails or Pella and, you know, making sure that we look more like a Polk City, whatever we determine that to look like and less like machine sheds. Um, well, you, you, can, you can do that. And so, I mean, sometimes they'll, you, you, communities will do it in selective zoning districts and not necessarily every zoning district. And I mean, and that, I mean, that I think would be a big project to look at because I think that you're, what you would look at for more detailed design standards where you're getting, almost getting into a design review committee type of an evaluation, uh, you'd probably look at the square significantly different than you would look at a business on Bridge Road or eventually on 44th or wherever you wind up having, having them. So I, sometimes it, what works in one part of town doesn't always work in every part of town too. Um, for example, some communities will have a, a more of a neighborhood commercial where they are wanting to be neighborhood friendly because it's closer to um, uh, residential neighborhoods. And so they will require pitched roofs and not allow flat roofs as an example. And that might help with what you're talking about in terms of the being more friendly to the neighborhood. So, um, but again, it's kind of then picking and choosing where where those types of designs would be appropriate and does that then change the zoning or, you know, or do you create a separate overlay district? Some community, Pella has overlay districts uh, in their zoning code where if a building is on what they call a gateway street, it has to look, it has to pass, go through the Dutch uh, Architectural Review Committee. You know, that's pretty strict. I mean, that's kind of, a, you know, on the very stricter side of things, but because other, without having the overlay, you know, it's hard to control it necessarily in zoning because, you know, proper, unless you're going to rezone the whole town, which is a, is a difficult thing to do. So, so to take it to that level is a lot bigger deal than just, than a, that's than the more simple approach where that it would allow, for example, allow PNZ to have some discretion in what's considered an ex, a, alternative to brick. Not saying it can't be done. It's just, that's a bigger project. Okay. All right, so Dennis, I have a question maybe for you move on to the next one. And I know it's a little early, but I'm getting kind of old and I'll either go to sleep by the time this is done or, or forget it. And can, can we clarify again, what, when we talk about action, who's taking the action first? Is it Kathleen coming back to staff and and staff coming to us, or is it staff with Kathleen, or is it us as PNZ? Um, there's a lot of things to do here, uh, and a priority list of some kind ought to be maybe one, two, three, instead of short, short, ongoing, whatever. Right. So could somebody just clarify for me um, who's, who's starting this action? Well, the way I look at this schedule here of the, of the plan here is that we have the lead, PNZ has the lead on these particular items. And whether we ask uh, Kathleen or the staff to maybe put something together for us to review, I, I can't, that's how I was thinking we would have to do this. So should we have a planning session to I mean, other than a, a meeting like we're having right now to 
maybe determine that and say, let's do this first. And, uh, you know, then let's go to this and uh, let's get a task done and, and then see what action needs to be taken or maybe what we need to have staff or Kathleen do and then come back to us. Special meetings is what I'm talking about. I'll have Chelsea confirm, but I would think for these site plan ordinance references, so there's been two, we're gonna get onto a third one here in just a second. I would think that we would work with Kath, staff, would work with Kathleen to essentially give some red line options for the site plan ordinance as a whole chapter in the affected parts, and then bring it to PNZ for review, very similar to the way we processed the subdivision ordinance. I like that. Yeah. And I think that's the way it ought to be done. And that's why I asked the question. Thank you. Yep. And if you look and I, I, I think I might take it a step further too and maybe say anything, you know, at the end of this meeting that we have identified as immediate or short that we'd like to have at least the first draft of the next step taken care of in the next, you know, three meetings or something along those lines. We'll as see well how as, we'll see as how well as ongoing are at the end of this. Yeah, as well as ongoing too, Ron. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right, like a plan for the ongoings. We we had a real good meeting with the council here a week ago, and I think it'd be good for us to strike while the iron is hot, and we have everybody, uh, you know, kind of encouraging us and 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 have lots of support. Right. Yeah, I, I thought we could kind of run through these so we know kind of what, what the plan expects us to look at, and then we can, you know, get this organized and start actually moving through these, and, you know, like uh, Jenny said, so. Is there any more discussion on the, the about our uh, design requirements and so on? If not, we'll move on to the next one here just to get it out here. Uh, review our architectural design standards for townhomes and apartment buildings, particularly with regard to articulated facades, covered porches or stoops for front entrances and roof design. And that's on a that's on the short timing is short on that on this list. And I think this was a, a item that became very important with the influx of the fourplexes that we had in our community a few years ago. Right. And uh, we <laughs> saw that we wanted to do some changes to have uh, future buildings that were similar size have a different look than that. <clears throat> Uh, I think we have talked about this a couple of times and, and, and we're wanting to change it to, or whatever standards we set up to have it uh, cover uh, buildings that have three or more units is how we were wanting to have it phrased where it might not necessarily cover duplexes or by attached, but would definitely cover uh, any three plexes or above. And uh, I know we, were, we had talked about uh, additional items, maybe talking about those at the end, but I do have one that I think could be ground into this section also. And that is having design standards for uh, large garage buildings that would be accompanied with the townhomes or the apartment buildings. As you go through our community, uh, our, through the Des Moines area, I should say, and you look at apartment buildings and large townhome complexes that are on busy streets, you'll see the backs of those buildings are actually quite attractive uh, for you know viewing from the back of the street or from the interstate. And uh, just as an example, the uh, the townhomes on Parker, those are just you know long buildings, uh, the, the garages for those, I should say, are just very long buildings. And I think it put the property that's being developed behind them at a disadvantage as far as what could go in there. Uh, it was gonna be difficult to put single family homes in there when they're looking at the backs of these long white walls of a garage. I, I, I think we need to have not only the front, but also the backs of those uh, uh, have some sort of architectural standard. 
And uh, it, since it is included, you know, really with townhomes and apartment buildings, it might be good to include in this section. Okay. All right, we, so we do have standards now, right? And yeah. so what we want to do is take a look at those and see how some of the comments like Ron was talking about could maybe be incorporated into that. Right. Okay. Yeah, and those are in your site plan ordinance. Right, right, okay. All right, is there any more for that? We'll, we'll, uh, that's uh, on the short list. <clears throat> the next one is create additional zoning districts to distinguish big box retail from neighborhood commercial areas and establish an office park zoning district. And that is, uh, timing is medium on that. Um, I suppose that's something that, might uh, need some discussion with council a little bit, do you think? Maybe have some kind of joint session to talk about that. Because I hate to start going down one road. And I think their partners has a different on idea. That. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> they're, they're listed as partners on that. Right. So I think maybe it would be if we create ideas and pass them off or... Okay, yeah. It might also be a good idea as you're looking at the land use plan to see what areas might be appropriate to designate as office park versus, you know, a big box, you know, where would you put a big, because you can write an ordinance about for big box retail, but if you don't actually figure out where you might want that. Um, right. Because well, then, we, then we would want yeah. to update the comp plan to adjust the future land use to separate big box retails from office parks right. versus general, right. you know, more general commercial retail type. Well, places. the other thing that might fit in here too, is we, this came up at our the meeting we had with the council is the uh, light industrial area there, how that's changed now because of the school. And we should probably be thinking about that in regard to this as well. So that's something we can take a look at in a secondary. <laughs> that's kind of on the secondary list compared to what we've been talking about up until this one. Is there any other comments here for this? No, I, I would agree keeping it at a medium timing where some of these other ones might be faster and a higher priority. Right. I think we're less likely to have one of these developments be knocking on our door tomorrow. So we might have a little more time to react on it. Right. Um, all right, well, good. Let's, uh, oh, um, the next item is we're listed as a partner with the council for encouraging development of non-traditional housing, including entry-level homes and senior housing options through the planned unit development process, combining residential and commercial uses in a mixed use plan and or creation of incentives to enhance affordability. Um, well, council's got the lead on that, but I don't know. I guess that's, that's ongoing. So I guess that's something we just need to keep in mind, I guess, for now. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree with you, Dennis, that these last two are just something that ought to be listed uh, as ongoing. Um, and maybe staff help remind us and counsel together of, uh, of this when time is appropriate. I'd also like to say that I'd like to see um, maybe staff come back with where we've kind of identified short and medium and uh, so forth, so forth in a priority list, and also try to maybe attach a tentative um, timeline to do this because it it kind of seems like we did this a lot of these things and never really pursued them very much and. 
we also need to maybe be reminded uh, in our agendas that we need to look at some of these things in when it comes up in a timeline. Right. And also maybe suggest a, uh, just a priority list. And I'm talking about at the next council meeting, or excuse me, commission meeting. Right. I, I think we need to get a, a list and then just, just actually make knock off one or two at our meetings as we go, <laughs> go through this so that we don't just let them set. All right, let's see, next one. Uh, that's listed as ongoing. Planning and Zoning Commission and City Council should adhere to all approved access management plans and policies when approving development projects and building permits along streets where access is limited. Is there anything that we need to know or should discuss there, Kathleen? Uh, not really. This, this The reason this is there is in part to help emphasize the importance of it if somebody's coming in if a developer is coming in and they're wanting to do something where it, that it doesn't meet the access pl management plan so okay. it, it just gives more teeth to when staff reviews something and says no your access needs to be here based on the access management plan for Westbridge Road or based on or for Third Street or or wherever you know we've got access management plans for Broadway Third and Bridge I mean may want to start looking at some point about access management plans on other uh, more major roads, like eventually, you know, 44th Street. Um, that one probably needs to be coordinated with Ankeny so that there's some cohesiveness there. Um, right. But as it is right now, um, when we have a development that comes in, we review access and SUDOS and the access management plans and we report back to you. But but again, just being able to say this, it's also a high priority for the comprehensive plan gives us even more teeth to, to stand on those requirements. Right. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, next that we are the lead on, and it's a short timing, adopt a complete street policy to ensure that all modes of transportation are considered on new street construction and street improvements. I think reference to this is included in our subdivision ordinance we approved. Right. Do, do, you, you think we've already pretty much addressed that, Jenny? Is that what you're saying? With the subdivision ordinance. Okay. Well, well but what all it's the subdivision ordinance is referencing one. You don't actually have a complete street streets policy. Okay, because I yeah. So um, that's probably something we should take a look at then. And we can, staff can get you some example policies of other communities similar to what Chelsea had said on the ordinances. Right. Okay. That way you're not starting from scratch. Right, because those, I know the complete street uh, concept is to accommodate all the various forms of transportation from pedestrian to bicycle to vehicle, to powered vehicles, I guess, right? Cars and trucks. Yeah, and trying to avoid the dead ends and right. through that way. Right. right, okay. Yeah, one of the things that is parcelly done um, that the subdivision ordinance uh, did update the sidewalk width from four foot to five foot. Um, yeah. So that's kind of a step in that direction. Uh, there's probably some other locations in the ordinance maybe that need to be updated so that it, so that that coordinates, I mean, that with, with the subdivision ordinance. So there may be need, may, maybe other areas of code that need to be updated for that. I should need to kind of look at several different, different things then or different places to make yeah. sure it all fit together. Exactly. Right. Okay. All right. Okay, next is, uh, and it's listed as ongoing, design neighborhood friendly streets, including connectivity, curvature, limitation of collector streets and incorporating landscaping and visual interest into the design. That's ongoing. I don't know that there's anything really to do other than to try to remember to look at those. Right. Those, uh, and, and that's something to, just as the subdivisions come in. So that's why it's an ongoing thing. It's not necessarily a change that needs to be happen. It's just 
con considering that as a priority. And one of the things with that is um, it, if you're limiting collector streets, what that one of the offshoots of that that's not specifically stated is uh, minimizing the number of cul-de-sacs. Because if you have, if I mean, if you went to a tree where you put total emphasis on collector streets, then you would have like a spine with a bunch of cul-de-sacs off of it. And so when you're limiting collector streets, that also means you're, you're limiting cold, the numbers of cul-de-sacs. Right, right, gotcha. Okay, well, I think, I don't know if there's anything really to do there then. Uh, <clears throat> the next one, we are a partner with the council on continue to work with the Des Moines um, MPO and other planning officials to maintain a network of streets that support the efficient and safe movement of traffic in the region. I suppose there's really nothing and that's ongoing. I guess that's just a reminder to keep those sorts of things in mind as we add on to the city and other, other major changes that we look at. Well, the, your, the new subdivision ordinance did take a step in the right direction on this too, and that is requiring developers uh, to perform and or pr have a, a one, an in traffic engineer uh, prepare a traffic impact study when the when the when it meet, meets a certain criteria that actually is established by the uh, ITE Institute of uh, Traffic uh, Engineers or Transportation right. Engineers, excuse me. Okay. So that's that's added. So that again is a help in doing this. All right. So. All right, very good. Okay, so next page. Uh, this one is uh, adopt an ordinance that requires trail easements to be at least 20 feet wide, 30 feet wide preferred, listed as timing is immediate and a and I see subdivision ordinance is under P and Z. So I presume that's where we would put this. Yeah. And it's done with the new subdivision ordinance. It's done. So mm -hmm. that, okay. And, and as the next one also, it says modify the parkland dedication ordinance to require usable park ground in terms of slope. Yes. Access. Yep. That's all. So those two are done, yep. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. We can move on. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, the next one I have here is page 144, and there's a small list there for us, P and Z. Um, amend the city code to require single family subdivision to provide full detention. Has that been? Yeah, the new subdivision ordinance addressed that too. Okay, so we've got the geotechnical report, we've got that. Mm -hmm. And it says here, consider amending the code to require developers to maintain suitable setbacks. But that's been done too, right? Yep. And over, and the, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, and the building envelopes are now required to be shown too. Okay, good. Now there's, it says continue to require overland foliage easements across natural drainage ways that define maintenance of embankments as responsibility of the property owner and not the city. Now, is that, is that done or is that it, something we need? To it's been something we've been doing since um, probably, well, I start with the city about 2003. So that's about when we started doing it. Okay, so um, we were, the easements that, the easement language that gets recorded with final plats specific, has specific language that requires the property owners to be responsible for the embankments. And it also has language um, whereby it allows the city to uh, remove drainage obstructions, but doesn't require them to. Um, so, so that's being ongoing and the new subdivision regulations actually um, require the city, city to provide the form of easement. So, it, it, that should simplify the process. Okay. Right. I think we still need to get those sample easements um, formulated, but. Okay, but so, so there's really, but those easements are not part of any ordinance or anything, right? They're going yeah. to just. Yes, okay. yeah. Well, they are in the sense that the subdivision ordinance. Yeah, they have to have out, them. 
Yeah, they, the subdivision ordinance spells out that that's a requirement, and it also says that the easements have to be on the city's form as opposed to on okay. the a right. form that the developer's attorney prepares. Okay. So, that, okay. So that's done or being done. The easements it's are done being drafted. For it would be done for PNZ. Yeah. Okay. So is that something that will come before us then eventually? No, that's all done through the attorney. That's all done. Okay, yep. through the attorney. Okay, and then the last one on that sheet is amend subdivision or to require sub drains on one side. Has that been done? Uh, it, and that it's actually been done where it requires it on two sides. Two sides. Uh, and okay. Two sides, unless um, unless the geotechnical report shows that it's unnecessary, but we've set okay. it up to be required on two sides. And the, and the primary reason for that too is, is not all, only just existing soils, but it's because so many people anymore uh, irrigate their yards and you wind right. up getting a lot of water from those irrigation systems that then can undermine the sub uh, grade of below the streets and, and it uh, damages the integrity of the, of the pavement. So hmm. the new subdivision hmm. ordinance does ad address that. Okay. So, Actually, that list that we just went through here, there's really nothing for us to do with that then. Correct. It's been done, taken care of. Okay. Right. Well, that's good. Hey, well, we can be. <laughs> and I was going to add, Dennis, um, so I, I didn't realize you guys hadn't met since October, so I kind of went back through and looked at the November, December, and January meetings of some, just to refresh my memory, because I, I couldn't think of it off the top of my head to, to update you guys in the in the um liaison report here whenever we get to that but um one of those items um uh, in i think the last meeting in november we added a stormwater fee um and it's all um two dollars a month which i know everybody's super excited to pay if you three dollars three dollars <laughs> sorry sorry um but i, I was going to point that out as, as you know again similar to, to what we talked about and and one of the things that i don't want to focus on this because I don't know how it's going to manifest exactly, but one of the things was um, that that pool of money would add is is an opportunity to, you know, maybe have some compost programs where there's a, a grant and or city matching to, you know, help retain uh, water a little bit better and some programs that we could get into. The stormwater fee is pretty standard across the metro. And again, that the, the, the compost thing is just one example of how that could be used in, in other facets relative to both of those items that, that were also addressed with the subdivision ordinance, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, right. Well, thanks. That's good. Good. Well, uh, I was, we only have one other item here and that's on page 146 and it's ongoing, uh, continue to construct new cul-de-sacs with 40 foot radius to accommodate fire apparatus. I don't know if there's anything to do there, is there? No, I mean, it's, that's covered in, well, it's covered in SUDOS and then it's actually uh, more specifically covered in your new subdivision ordinance than it used to be too, so. Right, um, okay. So actually, so unless a developer came forward and asked for a waiver. With a new subdivision right. ordinance, anytime there is, the developer wants to do something different than the subdivision, they have to actually request it in writing. So everybody knows exactly what they're not complying with. Right. So. Okay. Well, actually then we are, we are, don't have a huge number of, of uh, items to deal with. Uh, so I think it's uh, manageable if we kind of take a, a look at these and, and get together and, and kind of do a, a priority list and, and a timeline on how to try and get this stuff done. I think we should probably be able to get it done over the next few months, uh, maybe this year. Um, Dennis, could I add to your comment there? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think I said it before, but I like to say things twice for some reason. Um, <laughs> and you mentioned the priority list and something that's just specific to PNZ only um, would be easier for us to look at. And maybe instead of a date to 
uh, accomplish this or finish this or give it to council, whatever it may be, I'd like kind of a start date uh, based on maybe the priority and the realization of how time it might take to do something like this to at least get started. Right. Because it could be uh, a useful item to Jenny to add to our agenda each month or every other month or whenever it is appropriate right. to start on it. Um, and because I don't think we're going to know what a finish date would be, especially, but it could even be a column that, sure. that uh, you know, says right. where we can add, it's done. Well, yeah, and then other things, well, some things probably won't take quite so much time and others could be, you know, lengthy, so. So the good news is here, as I looked at it quickly, you really got three main things that we'll have. And then that from there, I can develop the priority list. But your three main things that we just discussed were updating the site plan ordinance in various ways. The um, future land use, map to identify those zoning districts and then the policy regarding the complete streets right pretty much everything else is done so or fits, or fits within those correct areas yeah correct. so right. i'll get something put together for the commission for the next meeting okay that sounds good sounds good okay are there any other uh comments or concerns on what we just kind of finished Going through here, any other uh, any other guess, things that we haven't talked about that we might want to consider? I, I would just throw out that if we don't have any other business for next month, that with this going on, that we have a meeting next month to continue this effort. Right, I think that's a good idea, Ron. That way, it kind of keeps us moving on it. Well, if there isn't anything else, we can move on to confirming a chairperson for this year. Um, Doug, you had some comments you wanted to make about our policy here or our custom. Well, <laughs> I sort of do, but they're self-serving <laughs> to some people. And uh, I'd rather talk about it after the election. Oh, okay. Um, um, yeah, I, uh, uh, our custom has been for the vice chair to move up and the newest person on the board to take the vice chair slot in our custom. Um, Krista is not on tonight. Um, I suppose uh, if uh, she's absent, she can't defend herself. <laughs> but uh, that's been our custom. Um, um, is there any concerns or objections to uh, doing that to her in absentia? I this is Doug again. I um, I don't want to change what's already put into motion. Um, and that's confirming you as, uh, or Krista as chairperson. Um, but after we vote on that and vice chair, then maybe we can discuss that custom. Okay. All right. Is there, see, I, I don't think we've really had nominations and closing the nominations. I think we've just uh, uh, confirmed that action. So is there a motion to confirm uh, Krista as the chairperson for 2021? So moved. Second? I'll second. All right. Thank you. All those in favor? Do we need to roll call on this? No. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign? Thank you. Krista is now our chairperson for 2021, and, and uh, we'll let her know. Uh, and who would be the vice chair based on our custom? That would be 
So your newest per it was either your newest person or whoever hasn't done it the longest. So everyone here, based on what I looked, has been chair and vice chair since 2015, except for Doug Sires. Well, and Doug, would you be willing to act as vice chair? Uh, yes, I would. Okay. So we have uh, Doug has stepped forward to be our vice chair for 2021. I have a motion to confirm, Doug. I'll so move that. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same aye. sign. All right. And I'm abstaining because I'm being voted on. <laughs> All right. So, Doug, comments? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I've been on the commission for about 11 years. And I was on planning and zoning in Johnston for about 15 years. And I was on some other commissions with the city of Des Moines when I lived in the city of Des Moines before that. And um, when I first came on, um, I was the person that they put right into the vice chair uh, pro tem, which I thought was a little strange because I hadn't been on this commission for a while, or it could have been somebody else that had never been on a planning zoning commission. And quite frankly, you learn a lot from uh, being on this commission and from the ex more experienced, long, more long-term members. And so I kind of felt uh, at least as a, somebody knew that I shouldn't be next in to run the meetings uh, in at least a year with only a year of, of exposure. I didn't say anything at the time because I had, had a lot of experience already on planning and zoning uh, in other cities. <clears throat> but I think it's, I thought they told me it was a rule when I came on, <laughs> is the word they use. And you, you use custom, which is probably uh, an excellent word too. But uh, I think I talked to Jenny about it and there's nothing in the code about this <clears throat> at all. Um, the only thing really I think is in the code, and Jenny correct me if I'm wrong, is that whatever's done has to be really approved by uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission as far as who's elected and who's nominated. And uh, we always want to kind of leave that open. Um, I also uh, think that uh, doing it for one year is um, too short a time. Uh, and the other uh, commissions I've been on basically had a two-year rule. And so um, there's a couple things I'd like to propose and it can be a rule or a custom or something we can talk about every year or two. Um, I, after I serve a one-year term, because um, I don't want to say that this ought to be put in for me to do two years instead of one, but after the, the, the vice chair, which would be me in 2022, I guess, um, that we maybe relook at or even make a policy now that the, the chairman and the vice chair serve at least two years. If we did that, it would be a better to then be okay maybe to appoint somebody that's been on the commission for at least two years. But I still don't like it. I think it's a dumb rule. Um, <clears throat> but I would like to propose that we maybe have a more open forum and, and once um, a more experienced longtime person has been chairman that we look at whoever might be that next person that hasn't done it, um, <clears throat> maybe uh, at least get an automatic nomination. Uh, and then we can open up to other nominations for vice chair. Uh, and we would continue to have that experience um, like we've, we've had. 
Um, I think there's some real good individuals on here uh, that um, do an excellent job and have no matter whether they were here for uh, a quick term or I've been around for a while, like maybe Dennis and myself and some of the others and Ron, um, you know, the other Doug, for instance, I think did a real good job coming in off the street and, and uh, not having a lot of experience. So that's, that's something that I would like people maybe just to think about and maybe put on the agenda um, for next time. And if the commission wants to proceed to at least discuss that further. Um, I could work with uh, Jenny and staff maybe to develop some wording that uh, might express uh, what I have just verbally discussed. I don't think we have any particular policies for So the let me interject. I don't mean to interrupt Dennis, but yeah. I, I don't have to validate with Chelsea and our attorney, but the selection of officers is is part of the Code of Iowa section. And it states that the commission shall choose annually at its first regular meeting, one of its members to act as chairperson and another to act as vice chair. So it is set by ordinance that it's annual. I just, and it is a Code of Iowa. I just don't know if the annual P, I, I need to look into it to see if it's an option to change it because we can't that, go against the state. In other code. words, you're not sure if, if we just have our own policy on how to do that. Well, you, you can have your own policy. You can have your own operating policy. The council does have to approve it. So you guys would approve it. Then the council would approve it. Um, but yeah, you have to go about appointing someone annually, but you can do a reappointment um, if you right. want to keep someone in the position for two years. Sure. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. All right. Well, that's something. I, I think that the, the two-year item can be a separate item from um, what we look at. And I, I don't want to do anything against Code of Iowa, but obviously I, I would like to discuss it, at least have a discussion further to, such that we don't well, automatically, you know, bring somebody off the street and they're the first one that does it. So. Well, if the, uh, well, the, what uh, Jenny read there is, doesn't have anything to do with, it just says on an annual basis, it doesn't mean it can't be the same person. Uh, so um, I think your point is well taken. And if you've been on other boards that have had something like that, it might be interesting to see if, uh, for example, Johnston would share their policy with us just to see what they've done. Oh, yeah, that, that was that was 11, 12 years ago. I don't know. Yeah. If still do so. But I don't think of the 15 years that I was on it that uh, uh, anybody read me the code of Iowa or even knew it. <laughs> all right. Well, I yeah. think something we can right. look at and, and, we can do and that. Uh, decide. Up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And uh, it, it had never dawned on me until I was looking at who all's on the uh, in the meeting, and with the exception of Kathleen, I think I'm probably the one who, who's been involved with the commission the longest. Yeah, you're and, the dean. Uh, <laughs> this, yeah, I just, I, I think I just flipped over on year 17, but I, I will say that back when I first started, uh, I, I think the reason for the uh, custom as it is currently is nobody wanted to be chair or uh, yeah, you know, or pro tem and I think that was the uh, kind of the custom at the time to get new blood involved uh, because nobody quite frankly nobody else wanted to do it and I really agree with Doug's uh, comments here and you know maybe we have as our custom that uh, to be the pro tem, you should have been on the commission for four years or some sort of uh, uh, timeline like that. Um, Jenny gave me a list, which I shared with Dennis, of when the last chairs were. And 2015, it was James Hill. So he, of course, no longer on it. 
2016, who, if we had a custom of the next person, uh, would be uh, Deanna. And 2017, Justin, 2018, Ron, 2019, um, our other Doug, and then 2020, of course, it'd be Dennis, and then Krista would come after that. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that custom, except uh, I would put the new person um, clear at the end of that list. Um, so uh, they would actually come, um, you know, down the list a few years. So the people who it's a seniority type of list. Uh, I, to do. Yeah, I, we can think about the, this month and see if we want to do anything formal at the next meeting. But uh, yeah, I, I, it's the, the duties of, of the job aren't terribly onerous. And, and it's kind of a, if you had a rotating thing like that, start with like Doug says, having the newer folks kind of work their way up, if you will, that might be uh, another way to think about it too. That's so, uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, and I don't have a problem with staff developing something um, without me being involved because I don't want anything to appear as it's self-serving to me, which I don't think it would be because <laughs> I, I go I go clear to the back of the list anyway. So, doesn't, which doesn't bother me a bit because I, I think it's a, I think it's a hard job sometimes. Uh, uh, the things that uh, our chairperson has to do and think well, about and and respond yeah. to the public. So. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a responsibility for sure. Um, any other comments or concerns about that particular issue? If not, let's. Uh, I, I, I would just like to toss out. Uh, I really appreciate uh, the lack of turnover that we have had on our commission, which has been unprecedented since I've been on the commission for this period of time that we've been relatively stable. It certainly makes us, I think, a, a better cohesive working group, and I sure appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Council liaison, anything more than what you haven't already told us? <laughs> I, I do. Uh, there's a lot there, uh, and, and Doug kind of put me, uh, I don't know if, if, if Doug... Uh, Olfest is the other Doug that that makes Doug Sire's original Doug or or, or <laughs> um, I think I was chair of PNZ the second year and I remember having the same you know I didn't want to tell anybody I was a little bit nervous but I was and 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 it, but it, it did exactly for him uh, or for me what it did for him it's accelerated your learning I, I loved it it was a little bit Maybe it's the power of the gavel that got to me too. I'll, I'll talk about <laughs> that as well, but um, I, I agree with that principle. Um, so, uh, kind of first thing, uh, in, in, I want to have a discussion with you guys on these updates, but uh, I do want to, since it's been a while, kind of take some macro level stuff. I, I really appreciated the work session, uh, and I'll be honest, that was something that I had been kind of advocating for for a while. I think that there should be. A larger dialogue between council and and uh, PNZ and parks for that matter as well, but uh, particularly PNZ. But I do really, really want to be cognizant of uh, kind of to the point of of the tenure that we have. The I'm a big fan of this group, and I, that's not pandering. That's that's my honest opinion. And so, if added work is going to put anybody that may be you know right on that edge of of time commitment or, or, you know, everybody has things going on. So I just really, really want to be cognizant of pushing people over the edge with some extra meetings and uh, topics rather than um, the, 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 all the other things that are happening. So, so let me know, or, or, you know, Chelsea, I don't want to volunteer for her for too much, but I just, I, I want to be cognizant of the added um, time that, that these work sessions and some of these other items may play into 
um, folks' willingness to, to continue to be involved. So I, I love them. I, I think that um, you know, we've all, uh, just speak for myself, I know that, um, you know, when certain things come through and you kind of wish, well, I, I wish we kind of would have tackled this more proactively, I think these type of conversations lead to lessening those situations where you kind of regret not having a, a, a discussion about the ordinance or, or you know, looking at, at different options. And so um, I, I think this is a, a proactive measure that, that really will serve us well um, as we move ahead. But like I said, don't want to sign anybody up for a ton more work. Um, I mean, going through that list, Dennis, I think that's a great list. I, I, particularly for me, the, the special districts is, is of interest, um, that, that some things that we can do that, that fit in certain spots and others, and as well as the outbuildings. Um, I know we've had conversations uh, around Wolf Creek, and I think that's particularly germane now that, you know, the, the back of lots in Wolf Creek are now the front of, you know, especially with the school going in there. And I think too, when I drive on 141 and some of the things that uh, ha is happening in Grimes along 141, I think there are maybe some some opportunities for us to learn from, from what's happening over there. It's obviously a different situation. 141 is, you know, we don't have that here, but um, I think that there's some learning that we can do. So I, I love the list that, um, that we've got uh, to, to tackle. Um, so that's kind of at a high level. I, I, so um, like I said earlier, I didn't realize um, that you guys had, had not met. So I made, I just went back through our meetings and made note of a couple items. Um, and then if you guys have questions on anything or this is too long or, or whatever feedback, you guys have, let me know that too. But um, first thing was, um, I wanna make sure you guys are aware that, that um, Confluence um, had been awarded the parks master plan for the Regional Park facility and that's started. Uh, they, they met with some key constituent groups. Um, they've not yet met with the council, but I was a part of that uh, hiring group and, and really excited that um, that group, I think, brings something to the table that we've had not had before, which is, um, you know, taking some time to, to, to kind of be real um, strategic and long term with what that area could be and meeting with different groups and um, and then once there's a consensus uh, helping us sell that looking for grants a lot of different stuff so uh, I'm excited to see what comes back from that um, we approve water and sewer rates I know that's the, a real um, uh, you know popularity contest that we would crush um, people love talking about water and sewer rates but um, and we did add the, the water, the stormwater fee, like I mentioned, um, the rates went up a little bit this year. They're mostly due to the increases that were passed along to from the WRA and the Des Moines Water Works. So um, not, you know, not didn't give me any pleasure to add to a bill that has changed dramatically over the last five years, but um, a, a good step to make nonetheless. Um, December, I think we finally approved the subdivision ordinances. We talked about a lot of different, um, uh, I think we had a good amount of conversation as did you guys going through that. And, and I think that was a huge step uh, in the right direction um, to, uh, to, to update some of the things that we've had there. Um, we did, it was a minor approval on uh, Edgewater extension. Maybe you guys have seen some of the work that's happening. Um, to connect Edgewater where it exists now to um, all the way to Parker. So uh, that's real exciting to see. Um, we had already approved the, the portion of uh, Lake Woods, um, but then also did the, the, the last little chunk to Parker. So um, hopefully maybe you've seen that uh, construction happening. Uh, and the last thing that I and again, this was just sort of my version of, of what I thought stood out from our business items is in the fall, we're going to be launching, and this is principally due to Chelsea's work and diligence, the Citizens Academy, um, which I'm hopeful has a good reception from the public, but it'll take a lot of the um, insights that, that had been provided to the neighborhood citizens group and, and apply them to a less static group. So there's hopefully 
um, just a, another avenue for people who want to learn more about different departments from the city. Um, and that'll start here in the fall. We've got a schedule for that. So um, do you guys have any questions? Is that, that's quite a bit longer than it probably should be or will be going forward, but there was five or six meetings there since I think you guys had last met, but any questions that you guys have that I can help with? Yes, guess not. <laughs> guess you did a good job. <laughs> Thanks everybody, I'm glad to be back with you. Yeah, anything from the city? Uh, updates from the city staff? Uh we will have um, at least one development item to discuss next month, maybe two, um, but otherwise we will continue to meet to work on our um, list of things that we're going to work on. Okay, great, thank you. And I just wanted to let you know, I'm sure you've seen it, but we did roll out a new website. And with that new website, I've encouraged everyone to go out and look at it, familiarize yourself with it, but most importantly, hit the e-subscribe button because if you were subscribed to updates on the old website, it did not transfer to the new website. Oh, okay, thank so you. To stay in the know and get copies of the agendas and whatnot, you can right. subscribe to library, parks, whatever, so. Good, all right, thank you. All right, or any of the commission members have any comments or concerns here as we wrap up? Yeah, okay, I, I don't have anything either. Hope everybody's Going to stay warm and stay safe here the next few days till we get back to a warmer, warmer climb. Um, if there's nothing further, uh, have a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All right. Thank you. All in favor. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all. Stay safe, and uh, we'll see you next month, if not before. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye now.